Hey guys, this is Chris. This is my piece of the reef again. I just want to create a quick little video. Um, all too often we forget about the return. If you go to CJ's aquariums, CJ shows the whole um, mechanism by which to calculate how much water will flow backwards in your return. Uh, bulk reef supply had a video from Macna where they talked about plumbing and uh, anti-back siphoning valves. Um, I've seen another YouTuber and I commented to her about how her return was a little bit low on the water. Um, and there were a couple of people on Facebook in the Red Sea Reefer um, group kind of talking about how to prevent, you know, what happens when the water goes out. When the power goes out, what happens to the water. So what I've done in the past is, is incredibly old school. And I'm showing you a video right now of my return. And I'm going to point out, right over here you may see some current moving back towards the overflow box. And right here and right here are two little holes drilled. And I'm going to show you what happens. We're going to simulate a power outage right now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off the max gyres to get rid of some of the water turbulence. And again, now that some of the water turbulence is gone, you can see that water shooting backwards. That's through the two drilled holes. All right, now I'm going to shut off the return pump. So what's happening now is water is back siphoning into the sump. And you can see it's starting to grab air here through this hole. This hole's a little bit higher. I want everybody to watch the water level over here. And we've just killed the back siphon. So what happened was, hopefully this is focusing, these two little holes, and you can see one drilled right here, and one right there, get the water off it, allowed air to start entering at this level. And because that level is at this height, we barely lost any water from the tank. And we will barely lose any water during a power outage. If we didn't have that, we would have lost water all the way to the level of, of where the return pump is below the water. So we would have lost another length of my index finger, my short, fat index finger, of water back into the sump. This is cheap insurance. It's a drill bit uh, and a little bit of time and a little bit of planning. I will eventually install a backflow valve on it. The problem is, if again, if you go to that speaker at Macno, all these valves potentially fail. So for five minutes of time and two little holes, it, it's going to save you a world of hurt. You know, if you have, you know, again, going back to CJ's formula, you calculate this volume of water and what your sump could hold, um, you could have five or six 10 gallons of water on, on your floor. And do you really want that to happen? All right, guys, we turn the pumps back on. First, I'll turn the return pump back on, and you'll see in a second, you're going to clear the water out of here. Some air comes through, and there you can see the water coming back up. It's not a noticeable amount of flow. It's just enough to break the siphon with the air. And then once we add the max gyres back in, Now we get a surface ripple. You barely notice it's there. All right, guys, have a good day. Hopefully this was helpful. Like I said, this is a very old school trick that we used to do on all of these tanks before there were any kind of crazy return valves. Take care, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we save somebody's carpet or hardwood floor.